In May 2012, Brandy Stevens Rosine set out to reconnect with an old ex-partner, unaware that this decision would plunge her into a terrifying nightmare. Despite her gut-wrenching unease and chilling last text message sent to her friend, Brandy vanished without a trace. But what sinister events unfolded on that fateful day? And how did a simple visit turn into a tale of unimaginable horror? And who were the key players in this tragic story? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name's Lloyd, hi there, and welcome or welcome back to the dark side of reality, folks. This case is possibly one of the most disturbing and unsettling cases we've covered yet on this channel. And with all that being said, get comfortable and relax. This is the tragic case of Brandy Stevens Rosine. Every year, nearly 600,000 people go missing in the United States. That's according to data from the Department of Justice. For search and rescue teams, trying to find them can sometimes feel like an impossible task. This case begins in the state of America, in the sunny Middle Western state of Ohio. The Midwestern state holds a massive population of around 11 and a half million residents to date. The state is also commonly known for manufacturing during the 20th century. However, nothing stays the same indefinitely, and many things have changed since then. Ohio is known for its beautiful open spaces, nature parks, evergreen forests and farmland, with many old country roads to explore. However, if that's not your kind of thing, Ohio is also known for great sports and great food, and many shy, small, quiet towns scattered in and around the state. One of those quiet little towns is where this week's case starts, at a cute town called Youngstown. It's deeply nestled between several state parks and forests, and with a small population of around 60,000 people, it's fair to say that nothing really happens here. And in all honesty, this sleepy town is a little ran down and has for sure seen better days. According to state information, during the late 1930s, Youngstown had triple the population back then. Brandy Stevens was born on November the 30th in the year of 1992 in Beavertown, Ohio. From an early age, she was a vibrant and a cheerful child who shared a close bond with her parents, sister and brother. Brandy's joyful nature was evident in her love for go-kart riding, singing and listening to music. She had a deep affection for cats and animals and enjoyed expressing herself through creative writing. Brandy's passion for music led her to join the orchestra as an upright bass player during her time at Broadmoor High School. She also played the electric bass, frequently jamming with friends on a weekend. Her quirky and genuine creative personality would always leave a lasting impression on everyone she met. And as Brandy entered into her late teenage years, her innate care in nature and curiosity about human behavior grew stronger. This led her to pursue a double major in psychology and sociology at Youngstown State University. After graduating from Broadman High School, Brandy's dedication to understand the complexities of the human mind and sociology had showcased her compassion in empathy and in her character. Alongside her academic pursuits, she also continued to follow her love for music and art, earning a reputation amongst her friends as popular, funny and sarcastic. And so, to be closer to a university, Brandy decided to move in with her parents who lived in Beavertown. This transition marked a significant chapter in her life as she courageously came out as gay. And it was just shortly after that, Brandy began dating a girl named Jade Ormstead, embracing her true self despite challenges that came with her newfound identity. Her openness about her sexuality was a talisman to her bravery and authenticity, standing firm in the face of adversity. However, Brandy was later diagnosed diagnosed with diabetes and managed her diabetes with resilience, never allowing it to hinder her spirit. Surrounded by a loving family, supportive friends and a bright academic future, Brandy's happiness radiated through a positive outlook on life. Her strength in vulnerability inspired others around her, showcasing her remarkable balance of tenacity and sensitivity. And it was throughout her teen years, Brandy navigated multiple relationships but hadn't yet found her right partner. Her family and friends were supportive of her journey, and initially they were also accepting of Jade Olmstead. The relationship between Brandy and Jade was definitely one where opposites attract. 
Brandy was outgoing and lively, but Jade was more reserved. And for the meantime, Brandy's family, sister, mother, they... They, they really liked Jade, but they soon began to notice unsettling aspects to Jade's personality. Despite their own concerns, they prioritised Brandy's happiness and tried to put their own feelings aside. Unlike Brandy, Jade, however, came from a troubled background, as her parents were more involved with drinking and drugs than rather caring for her, creating an unstable and neglectful home environment. And Jade's family did not accept her sexuality, which only attributed to her unhappiness and struggles with her own self-acceptance. This stark contrast within the family dynamics made Jade's life more challenging and definitely influenced the relationship between her and Brandy. Initially, Brandy and Jade had a strong relationship. Their bond seemed to thrive on the differences that initially attracted them to each other. However, the dynamics began to shift when Brandy invited Jade to live with her. Brandy was juggling the demands of work and school, while Jade had no such commitments leading to an imbalance in their relationship. And as Brandy continued to work tirelessly and attend classes, Jade's lack of direction and inactivity began to create tension. The differences that once seemed complementary now start to reveal deeper incompatibilities. Brandy's structured life and ambitions clashed with Jade's, straining their relationship and highlighting their divergent paths. And despite the amounting challenges, Brandy's commitment to her relationship and her compassionate nature led her to support Jade through her struggles. However, as the weeks went by, it became increasingly clear that their relationship was under significant stress. The pressure of maintaining her responsibilities whilst trying to nurture Jade began to take its toll on Brandy. And in 2011, the cracks in Brandy and Jade's relationship deepened dramatically. Yeah, Jade stole Brandy's iPod and her savings of $300 before leaving abruptly, leaving Brandy heartbroken. This, however, was a serious heartbreaking and painful betrayal for Brandy to deal with. I mean, she had invested so much of her time and herself in this relationship, and Jade had leached onto Brandy seeking acceptance and love but she ultimately took full advantage of Brandy's kindness and trust. The theft marked a turning point in their relationship, revealing the extent of Jade's troubled nature. The incident forced Brandy to confront the harsh reality that Jade's presence in her life was actually more damaging than she had potentially realised. And even though Brandy's family and friends had harboured doubts about Jade, they all rallied around her in the wake of this betrayal, as they provided Brandy with the support she needed to heal. With their initial thoughts about Jade, validated. Now at the time the emotional trauma and the breakup of this awful betrayal left Brandy questioning her judgement and the true nature of the relationship she had with Jade. And as Brandy navigated the aftermath of the heartbreak she decided to focus on her studies and personal growth. When you get into a relationship and it just goes really crappy and everything goes wrong, there's a time when you reflect on yourself and you start to ask yourself, is there something I could have done differently? You know, it, was it all my fault? And you have to hold your hands up and say, listen, could have done this better, could have done that better. But many people don't do that. The experience, though painful, strengthened her resolve to prioritise her well-being and be more cautious about her future relationships. Now, it was at this point after leaving Brandy, Jade returned back to Baltimore to live with her family. And it was there she rekindled a relationship with an old school girlfriend named Ashley, a tough and mean-spirited 20-year-old who lived in Pennsylvania, about 80 miles from Youngstown. Comfortable with her identity, Ashley would often refer to herself as a Butch bitch. I'm a bush bitch. Yes, you are. Kind of like that. She she was overconfident with being a butch bitch. Yeah. And she would often share her private pictures on selected adult websites. Yeah, she's classy. This the girl's got class. Not really. Now, despite the lack of acceptance from Ashley's family, Jade moved in with them, only adding further complications to her life. Fast forward just 12 months, and it's now mid-spring, in the year of 2012, when all of a sudden and completely out of the blue, Jade reached out to Brandy. And even though she was still in a relationship with Ashley, their relationship was a tumultuous one, marked by periods of silence and sporadic attempts to rekindle what they had once lost. Jade's interaction with Brandy was also complicated by Ashley's aggressive and narcissistic behaviour. Ashley's brass nature stood in stark contrast to the low self-esteem and confidence issues that plagued both Jade 
and Brandy. But uh, despite these complexities, Brandy and Jade began spending time together again. Brandy, the ever kind and loving gorgeous soul, would often buy things for Jade, rekindling their former closeness. However, these interactions would not go unnoticed by Ashley, who grew increasingly jealous and resentful of Brandy. Sadly, this is where we're going to end the story for now, but come back in a couple of days where I will tell you the rest of this horrific crime story. And also, if you're a fan of true crime, then please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.